Hi everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make an interactive quiz in PowerPoint using slide-based feedback, object-based feedback, and audio-based feedback. Now, this is one module assignment that you're going to definitely have to do in the actual software version of Microsoft Office. Do not do this assignment in uh, Office 365, the web-based version of Office. It's not going to work. So make sure, if you haven't already, to download one of your five free copies of Microsoft Office to your computer so that you can properly do this assignment. Another note, uh, object-based feedback is not available on the Mac version of PowerPoint. I don't know why, but it's not in there. Maybe Steve Jobs didn't like object-based feedback, but that is not an option for you Mac folks. So you would have to focus on slide-based feedback and audio-based feedback for your homework assignments. All right, let's get into it. To begin, you'll see that there is a skeleton here with a whole bunch of quiz questions that we need to make interactive. There are also some navigation pieces on here and then some slide-based feedback slides. To start out, what we're going to do is uh, put navigation on these slides. So there are kind of two ways you can do that. You can right-click on any object, text box, whatever, and uh, go to hyperlink. And in hyperlink, I could go to the left-hand side and underneath where you put in a web address, there is a place in this document button. And place in this document means exactly what it sounds like. You can have a hyperlink go to any page in this PowerPoint. So uh, if we were on the second page and we wanted to go backward, we would select primary colors, which is the first page, and hit OK. And then if we were uh, viewing this, we could click that arrow with the hyperlink, and it would take us back a slide. So that's one way you could do it. Um, I don't like that type of navigation. It's not exact, and it could make more trouble for you than it's worth. So what we're going to do is go through, and we're going to start over as far as navigation. It'll all make sense why in just a second. So on this first slide, primary colors, we're going to insert shapes, and we're going to go all the way down to action buttons. And what we want is the you know going right action button and we're going to put that right facing action button in the bottom right hand corner of our slide. Now from here it looks a little bit different than if you were to make a uh, hyperlink to a place in this document for an object. Um, this is a little bit different so these are the action button settings. So we can hit hyperlink to and then we can tell it exactly what slide we want it to go to by going down to the slide option. On Mac, it looks slightly different. There's a little drop-down arrow uh, next to slide. You have to hit that, and then you can select what slide you want it to go to. So we select slide, and then we're going to tell it exactly which slide we want it to go to, which is slide two. Now, if we ever you know mess around with our navigation or our pages or anything like that, um, this slide and this button is always going to go to that slide two, that second, uh, that first question, second slide. So we're going to hit OK and OK. So now you can take a look. If you view it in presentation mode, if I click that little arrow, it's going to take me to that next question. So we have to do pretty much the same thing on uh, this second slide here. So we're going to go to Shapes, Action Buttons. We're going to do the left facing. And instead of previous slide, we're going to make it exact. So we're going to hit Slide. And we want it to be slide number one. Hit OK. And then we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Uh, but facing to the right. So we're going to put another action button here and we're going to tell that slide, that hyperlink rather, to go to slide 3. Okay, And you can resize these as needed um, you know, to make sure that they are uniform. You can also put the button over top of the other one, drag it, make sure it's the same size, and then line it up. Okay, now we have navigation on this second slide let me show you how to make these different answers interactive. So to make text interactive you can either highlight the actual uh, text, right click it and go to hyperlink and then you can tell it what slide to go to but if you do that it's going to make your text blue like a hyperlink would be you know on a website. We don't want that, it doesn't look very good so what we're gonna do is we're going to click the actual text box that the answer is in and you'll see a very important feature of interactive quizzing for this slide-based feedback is each answer has to be in its own individual text box. That's key. If you don't have your answers in individual text boxes, then you know all of your text is going to go to the exact same slide 
when you put in the hyperlink. So you have to make sure that each uh, piece of text is in its own text box. You're going to click in the text box and then click the little frame that appears around the outside. So the little dotted lines that are connected uh, with these circles, we're going to click that frame on the outside and then right click. And once we do that, we can go down to hyperlink and then we can tell it what slide we want it uh, to go to. So what color is this square? Obviously it's blue, so uh, we would want our uh, navigation to go to this uh, happy thumbs up guy right here. So we're going to hit 4 and then hit OK. Now green, red, and yellow are all incorrect, so what we're going to do is send those to slide 5, which is our negative feedback. So we're going to click in the text box, click the little outside uh, frame around it, right click that frame, and then go down to hyperlink, and then we're going to tell it to go to slide 5. And we're going to repeat that process for red and yellow. Right click, slide 5. Okay, so now if I were to view this in presentation mode, um, blue would take me to the correct slide. And then if I selected, you know, any of these incorrect answers, so let's say I select red, it's going to take me to the negative feedback. So if yours looks like that, then it is set up correctly. Okay, so you may have noticed that uh, depending on what answer we select, we're going to have a navigational dead end. See, there's no navigation here. We can't go back to the question that we just answered. We can't move on. Um, so that's something that we need to add for both the happy face and the sad face. Um, so what we're going to do here is go to insert, shapes, action buttons, and then we are going to put an action button in the bottom left with the little back arrow, and this is where it's going to be a little bit different. <clears throat> so uh, with the action buttons, you have the ability to send the person that is going through the interactive quiz uh, to the last slide viewed. So no matter what question someone comes from, when they hit this button, it's going to take them back to the question that they just answered. How does this come in handy? This comes in handy because you only need these two uh, you know, pieces of feedback for all the different uh, questions that you have slide-based feedback for. So if I were to add you know, six more uh, color questions in here, I could have the correct answers for those six other questions linked to this one, and the incorrect answers linked to this one. Um, and all I would have to do is just make sure that on this slide we have the last slide view. So it's always going to take them back to the question that they just answered and then they can navigate forward uh, from there. So we're going to put a last slide viewed in here as well. So bottom left hand corner, last slide viewed. Okay. So now when I view it, if I select red, it's going to take me to this, but then I can hit the last slide viewed. It'll take me back to the question I just answered. I can answer it again, last slide viewed, and then I can continue on in my interactive quiz. Okay, so on this slide, uh, we're going to need to have our navigation as well. So I'm going to insert, shapes, action button. That's going to go backward. And I want this to go to slide two. Hit okay. And then this is the tricky part. So this is a little bit different. Um, once we get the answer for this question, we want to end the quiz. So we're going to put in an action button, but it's different than the other ones. So we're going to go to action buttons and then go all the way to the right. And we have this blank button, and that's going to be our end show button. So we're going to pop that in there, and then we're going to go to hyperlink two and we're going to say end show. Okay, so that'll spit us back out into the uh, editing area and we'll know that we're all done. So let me show you what that looks like. So once we get our answer, we're going to hit end show and it'll spit us back to this point, which is what we want. Okay, so now we have all of our navigation set up across all the different slides. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to add object-based feedback. So you'll see that we have all of these uh, you know, pieces of feedback on the actual slide where the question is. And what we want to happen is once the user clicks each of these different shapes, we want the feedback that's underneath to pop up for them. So they click an object, that's why it's called object-based feedback, and then the feedback pops up. Okay, to do this, 
we're going to once again select the entire text box so make sure you click that frame around the outside make sure that you have that and then you're going to go to animations at the top and we want this feedback to appear okay so that's the first part so we have appear um, up here in the top we're going to click the animation pane we're going to need that in just a little bit uh, but the next step here is to put a trigger on that animation so if we hit trigger and we have the drop down on click of and then we're going to select the object that once it's clicked we want that feedback to show up for so we'll hit uh, the blue square so right now if I view it if I click this blue square that feedback will pop up okay and we're going to do the exact same thing for all the other uh, objects that are in here so we want that feedback to appear trigger is going to be on click of yellow circle we want this feedback to show up for the trigger of the green circle and then we want this text box to appear on the trigger of the red rectangle okay so now if I view it you'll see that all of this feedback pops up on that same slide or screen. Okay, so I've gone through how to do slide-based feedback and object-based feedback. The last one that I want to show you is how to do audio-based feedback. So over here in this animation pane, if I click one of these, there's going to be a drop-down arrow. And with that drop-down, I can go down to Effect Options. And underneath Effect Options, I can add a sound to that answer. So for the blue square, it's incorrect. I'm going to put some type of negative sound on there. So I'm going to hit the bomb. And when I uh, click that, it's going to make that sound. So let me show you. OK, so now I have two types of feedback there. I have the audio based, and I also have the object based. So I'm going to do that for each one of these guys. So for the yellow circle, which is also incorrect, I'm going to go to Effect Options. And then for a sound, I'm going to do another negative sound explosion. For uh, this green circle, that's the correct answer. So we're going to put applause in for that one. All right. And then for this last one, I want to show you that you can actually upload your own sound clips into these uh, you know, different pieces of feedback. So one year. A uh, student actually recorded his own feedback, and it was just him like yelling when the answer was incorrect. Uh, and then it was like a congratulations sound clip when it was correct. So it was pretty funny. Um, so you can record your own, or on the course resource website, I have these two sound files that are right here. Um, so we can hit the buzzer, and we can download that. Download, direct download. And that's just going to go into my downloads folder. And then we can also do the Homer Simpson Wahoo. OK. So back in PowerPoint, um, for my red rectangle, I'm going to click that, hit the drop down, effect options. And instead of no sound, we're going to go all the way to the bottom to other sound. This is where we're going to navigate to wherever we have the sound files, which in our case is in the downloads. So we're going to hit the buzzer because it's incorrect. OK. And you can hear the uh, sound that is played. And then uh, we can switch up the correct and have Homer Simpson's voice in there. So we're going to go to Effect Options, and then we're going to upload the Homer Simpson sound. Woohoo! Woohoo! OK. So now when we view it, we have two types of feedback, the object-based and the audio-based. The last step before you hand this guy in is to turn on Browsed at Kiosk Mode. So with Browsed at Kiosk Mode, um, this function makes it impossible for you to you know, just click on the screen to advance. So if I were to you know, bring this up right now and just click on the screen, it would also advance the uh, presentation. We want it to uh, only be navigated by our navigation buttons. So Browsed at Kiosk Mode is going to make sure um, that it can only be navigated with those buttons. So to do this, we're going to go up to Slideshow, and then under Slideshow, we're going to go to Set Up Slideshow. And then here, you can see that Browsed at Kiosk is an option. We're going to click that and then hit OK. 
and now let me show you the difference. So now I can't just click anywhere on the screen to advance, I have to actually use the buttons. So before you hand it in, make sure you turn on browse to kiosk mode for your instructor to grade, and then also uh, turn it on and try and see if you hit any navigational dead ends that you can advance forward uh, or backward by you know using the scroll wheel or clicking anywhere on the, uh, the actual uh, interactive quiz. So to show you that this all works, I'm going to hit correct and incorrect answers. Okay. All right, so that is how you make an interactive quiz in PowerPoint with slide-based feedback, object-based feedback, and audio-based feedback.